that a soft spot for this opera. It's, it's got such vital energy and spirit and positivity. It's really vivacious and open-hearted. <laughs> Il Re Pastore is an opera that Mozart wrote when he was 19, so it's fairly fully fledged, verging on adulthood. He'd already written some masterpieces, the Exultate Jubilate, the 25th and the 29th symphonies, and of course more than half a dozen operas, including Richard Arte and Lucio Sulla, which were, were big opera seria compositions written for Milan. <laughs> The story is a cast of five, two pairs of lovers and Alexander the Great. The opera is set in Phoenicia. There are two couples, local, who are in love, Aminta and Elisa and Tamiri and Ajenore. Aminta is told that he's not a shepherd, as he's been brought up to believe throughout his whole life. He's actually the rightful heir to the throne. And Alexander the Great, having put him on the throne, decides that his, the second wave of his master plan will be for Aminta to marry Tamiri, thereby completely throwing everybody into confusion. Everyone was happy before Alexander the Great turned up. Everyone's happy once everything's resolved. It's only the women at the end of the piece telling him that he's got it wrong. He, he sort of is cornered and has no option but to go back on his word and say, yes, of course you can marry who you love. You can feel the germ of the Mozart the Dramatist starting to wake up. It's not quite as, as, as brilliant as it is in Figaro, for example, but the story and the way he treats it, where he places arias and uh, at what point in the story he punctuates recitative with aria is, uh, I think, very stimulating. I've worked with all of the cast before, except John Mark Ainsley, and it's been a huge joy and inspiration, I would say, for me to be working with him. He's an archetypal Mozartian singer, well-versed, and sung so many of the Mozartian roles before. As far as the cast is concerned, I feel a bit like the old codger. I think I've got ten, at least ten years on the, on the oldest of them. The thing I find extraordinarily um, stimulating, exciting, not surprising, is how instinctively stylish and stylistically aware younger singers are already. I love singing Mozart. I always have from when I first started. It's demanding because you have to be on all the time. But I feel it fits me like a glove, so that's what's so nice. It's so nice to sing a repertoire that's right for you. Edith Tynan um, is a wonderful soprano who I've worked with several times. She's such a ball of fire and um, brings brilliant energy and, and enthusiasm to everything she does. Yeah, it's great now, today, to if we'll have the energy of the orchestra in five minutes, we're just going to have the actual first orchestral record. And to get that extra, all the energy of all those people. And this orchestra really know how to give you a, it's like an extra frisson of excitement that carries you through. Sarah Fox is one of several classical opera artists who worked with the company right at the beginning of her career, so she feels very much like a sort of homegrown talent in a way. The role of Ajenore is sung by Ben Hulet. It's a tenor who's been on my radar for a while, and when we, when we did the Wigmore Hall concert a couple of years ago, it was such an effortless pleasure to work with him. In this recording, we have one of the most celebrated tenors of, of, of our day in John Mark Ainsley, and for me, it's uh, an honor 
and, uh, and an absolute pleasure to, to watch him and listen to him and, and learn from him. There's been a wonderful sense of both mutual support and, and encouragement and, and enthusiasm, but, but also just a sense that we're onto something and that this piece really has a, has a magic. <laughs> Some of the orchestral writing is incredibly dynamic and certainly the, the orchestral contribution to the sound world and, and to the emotional content of the arias is really considerable, particularly compared to other composers of the period. <laughs> For the finale, we suddenly, having never had more than two singers singing at once with the orchestra, we suddenly have all five. And it's so vivacious. It's, and for me, actually, this number is the one that, that has most uh, prefiguring of, of the really grown-up Mozart. The range is absolutely astonishing. You've got, you know, tub-thumping coloratura arias. You've got ravishing duets. You've got uh, what might be, you know, thought of as a, as a, as a ballad, but you know, beautiful, serene, loving solos and a wonderful orchestral activity. I mean, you could say that in all great operas you've got those, and this is no exception.